So, I know that this video is coming a day late because I usually post these on the weekend, but we're back with another episode of Your Take Not Mine, which is the series where I turn to you, the viewers, to give me your hottest NBA takes of the week based on what's going on at the time, and I then choose my favorite submissions and discuss them in a video. This week, a lot, and I mean a lot, went down in the NBA world as free agency got underway, where plenty of moves were made ranging from big names changing teams to teams making some moves around the margins and everything in between, plus some massive trades happened and there are rumored to be even more on the way, so of course we have plenty to discuss. In order to submit your takes, I make a community post on either the day of or the day before the video, similar to the one that you see on your screen now, so if you want a chance to be featured in a future episode, be sure to stay on the lookout for that. Before we start though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Malcolm, and he says that the Nets situation isn't actually that bad, and they could still be a playoff team depending on what they get back from a Kevin Durant trade. So as this take insinuates, the biggest story of the week by far was when it came out that Kevin Durant wants out of Brooklyn, and ever since, we have been patiently waiting to see how that situation plays out. Kevin Durant is arguably the best player to ever hit the trade market, and at the very least, he's one of them, so we could see a historic trade package put together here. Now, in theory, would an enormous haul of assets and potentially another star player in return for him be good? Sure, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world by any means. However, this take in particular is just a massive cope from my point of view, and there's no two ways about it. Right now, the Brooklyn Nets situation is nothing short of a disaster because the Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving era with the team has been a complete failure, and now both are potentially looking to get out of town. Combined, they've only managed to win one playoff series together after being pegged as an unstoppable super team when they first joined forces, and the way things are now imploding is a complete disaster for the Nets. They already mortgaged their future in order to acquire them, along with James Harden too, and even if they get a decent return in a trade for Durant, it's not going to make up for the fact that the Nets will be viewed as a joke for a long time after this, and their future will remain bleak as a result of it. The next take we'll be discussing today comes to us from Gerst, and he says that Carl Anthony Towns actually benefited the most of anyone this summer because of the Rudy Gobert trade, because Gobert will solidify the team's defense and take pressure off of him as a rim protector. So the Timberwolves were one of the teams that have already made a massive splash this summer, trading away a ton of future first round draft picks along with an assortment of players in exchange for Rudy Gobert and the addition has been pretty polarizing across NBA fronts. Some people really love the move because the team's defense was the biggest area they needed to improve upon, and they just added a multiple-time winner of the Defensive Player of the Year award. But then other people hate it because both Gobert and Towns are best utilized as centers, and the fit feels a bit wonky in theory. And while I definitely don't hate the move at all and think the team will improve undoubtedly as a result of it, I do find myself leaning towards the second group of people that have some concerns. Yes, Carl Anthony Towns has had his share of struggles defensively and isn't exactly the best rim protector in the world, but I don't think the solution to that is to slide him over to power forward and make him defend forwards full time either. I don't love the idea of Towns having to guard smaller, quicker players for most of the game at all, but then again the saving grace is that now they have the best interior defender in the game to make up for it. Offensively, Towns tends to play out on the perimeter a ton already, so the fit there will work well and be very fun to watch play out, but as I said, I do have some concerns, and overall I disagree that Towns has benefited the absolute most of anyone this summer. The next take we'll be discussing comes to us from Abine, and he says that the Clippers are now in the tier of teams favored to win the title, alongside the Warriors and Celtics because of the fact that they just signed John Wall. 
Because of the fact that there has been so much going on this summer, and so many big splashes making headlines, the John Wall saga coming to an end has flown way under the radar, as he and the Rockets finally agreed to a buyout, and he then signed with the Clippers after that was finished. I'll say right off the bat that I absolutely love this move for the Clippers, and even before they added Wall, it felt like it could have been argued that the Clippers were about to emerge as title contending favorites regardless. There's a certain player by the name of Kawhi Leonard coming back next season, and after missing all of last season, he's going to give the Clippers a massive boost to get them back where they want to be, which is in the conference finals at least. The Clippers are one of the deepest teams in the entire NBA, with tons of shot creation and two-way contributors on this roster, but the one glaring weakness of theirs has been the playmaking department. Reggie Jackson took a step backwards last season after an impressive playoff run two seasons ago, and after that, their point guard depth was pretty lacking. People have forgotten how good of a playmaker John Wall is because he hasn't played in over a year, and last time he was on the court for the Rockets, he was admittedly struggling, but there's a difference between Wall having to be a team's best player, which he was in Houston, and him simply having to play a role, which is what he'll do in LA. And with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George leading the way for them, Wall's tremendous passing ability will shine along alongside them. It's so early in the offseason at the moment, so I won't speak on who are the favorites to win the next championship, but I will say that I really like this Clippers team going into next season. And finally, the last take we'll be discussing today comes to us from William, and he says that the Jalen Brunson contract will become the worst contract in the NBA. The Knicks made another move this offseason that made people scratch their heads when they signed Jalen Brunson to a four-year contract worth $104 million. The Knicks, from the very beginning of the summer, put all of their eggs into that one basket, prioritizing Brunson at the signing that they wanted, and they did in fact get him, but the price that they paid, and with how desperate they were to sign him, has made people question why this was their motive. I'll say before anything else that I've been been high on Brunson since the day he got drafted, and if you don't believe me, you can go back to look at my Hidden Gems video from the 2018 NBA Draft where I specifically picked him out as one of the Hidden Gems from that class before the draft even happened. Brunson broke out initially in the NBA as one of the best backup point guards, and then he transitioned this year into being one of the best and biggest emerging point guards period while playing alongside Luka Doncic, and it all culminated with a 41-point performance in the playoffs this year, and overall, he averaged 22 points during this playoff run. Do I think Brunson is good enough to be an all-star? Eh, probably not. However, I do believe that he can be a guy averaging nearly 20 points a game, and maybe giving you about 6 or 7 assists per game, and if he does that in New York, then he will absolutely be worth the money, so I disagree with this take. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about the takes we discussed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.